Hi viewers, welcome to another episode of House and Home. I'm Mastrulli Plakipimi Company tonight. Now we're in the second week of the National Isolation Strategy and we must abide by the COVID preventive measures that are in place. When you're outdoor, wear a mask and when you're coughing, cough into your elbows and make sure to wash your hands with soap and always keep a safe distance. And stay home as much as you can because you can save lives. It's the end of the month and the quarter of the year and on tonight's show we do a throwback to a few years ago where talented producers were behind scenes to bring to you more tips and ideas to your homes. Now this is out and about from a talented producer called Margaret and she was at Sogeri for another interview with the Koitaki Country Club. Here it is. Well this week I'm taking all of you guys with me to the Koitaki Country Club. Let's go check it out. Turned 35 last Sunday, and his hair he found some gray. Oh, hi guys! Today we're out and about again, and I'm actually enjoying a game of pool at the Koitaki Country Club Bar, also known as Bob's Bar. Now, if you didn't catch our segment last time, this is Out and About, where we show you some good places you can take your kids to on the weekends. Let's see how we got here. Koitaki Country Club is located on a mountain towards the Sogeri area. From the city, we started the winding 45 minute to one hour drive towards Sogeri. As we ascended the mountains, I could feel the warm tropical air becoming cooler. The drive is a bit steep, but make sure you take your time and enjoy the scenic mountain views on the way. Drivers, be sure to beep when turning sharp corners. Koitaki Country Club was first established in the early 1970s. It was built as a place where people can go outdoors, camp, and play polo, believe it or not. Even today, some of the old remnants of the polo course can still be seen on the grounds. The club has been recently refurbished with vast open fields to enjoy walking, horse riding, and you can even bring up a tent and camp out here. If camping in a tent is not your thing, you can stay in one of their bungalows. Koitaki boasts of their golfing facilities and their scenic views. I personally enjoy looking and taking pictures of the natural wildlife here. The bar and restaurant is fully equipped with all the facilities you would find in the city. As you've seen, I really enjoyed playing pool there, and the Koitaki beef burger was legendary. I'm in front of the poolside deck enjoying a nice glass of iced tea. Now behind me is the renowned Bob's Bar where some of my friends are playing pool and enjoying themselves in there. Now next to the pool on this side is the children's playground. As I said earlier, this is a place the whole family can enjoy. Hi Mrs. Bradshaw, thank you for having us come down to see you at this wonderful place. Um, can you tell us a bit about the history of the place? Because I noticed a few photos in the bar and outside here, so... Thank you for, you know, having time to come down this place. Um, actually, my husband and I, initially, we built this place in um, 2013. Mm -hmm. uh, that's when we opened the club and you can basically see that um, this place here used to be a, a polo racing club before, for the right. expatriates before. I think there was a rubber plantation back in the 1970s. So um, everything here is um, new. Our membership has gone out to 300 plus. Oh, wow. And um, actually we're opening the membership for this year again, so it's gonna be open soon as well, so I can send that out and you know, send it out to the members and the non-members as well too. And the activities we have up mostly is camping. The big hit we have here is camping. Um, we have um, some bike riding clubs who come up here as well. Now, it was not a 
We didn't actually start these at the first place, but we had members, most of them. So we had the dirt road bikers usually come up here and have drives. We have the bush walking club as well. That's a big group that comes say twice, three times in a year. So we do have, um, like let's like say if you come for bush walks and all that, you want to come up. We organize that, we have our own guides and everything. They take you for an hour or two to go out, apart from the camping. Um, basically, that's basically we have about other members come up here. We host weddings and other stuff as well. So we've got about three or four weddings so far since the club has been opened. We have a kitchen, um, serves the normal menus, lunch, breakfast, dinner. So, um, um, well, I'll let you to try the food yourself because I can't say, but the response from our food is very, very good too. So, yeah. you want to bring your family out of the city? This is a good place to be. You want to do camping, or you know, I'd really urge you to take it out. It's more family. I think we want to encourage you know people in town to just get out of the city and you know enjoy the nature because we can't. Unfortunately, we can't have that in the city. So, yeah. you come and enjoy yourself out here. Thank you, Mrs. Bradshaw and the staff for having us. It's been a fantastic day. Parents, bring your kids here to enjoy nature together or take your pick of the various activities available. Now, I really do not want to leave, but I have to, I have to go back and find you more awesome places to enjoy. So I'll see you guys on the other side. And that was Margaret, a talented producer for House and Home a few years ago. We'll go for a quick breather when we come back with Cooking with Nicole. Welcome back. If you just joined us, you're watching House and Home and we're still on the throwback session. Now coming up, we have cooking and this time on cooking, Nicole, who is a talented producer, shared a recipe a few years ago. Here it is. And welcome to this cooking segment. Now I'm heating up the oil in this pot because I'll be doing a deep fry with the ingredients that I have here. Now tonight's recipe is the simple recipe called the sweet chili chicken. We have three chicken breasts here that I'm going to slice up and you'll see that on this side I have some recipes and on that side I have. So this is the first part of the recipe that we will do then we'll go on to the second part of it. Now the first part you will need three pieces of chicken breast, three and a half tablespoon of corn flour, one egg, one teaspoon of black pepper, also a teaspoon of mixed herbs, you have a teaspoon of salt as well, and three teaspoon of soy sauce. Now, in order to get this recipe done, I have to cut this into edible sizes, the chicken. Now, I told you it has to be edible sizes, the pieces that you'd like, so this is how I'm gonna slice them. I'll just put this dish so that you see it edible slices like that. Make sure they're big slices like that. Okay, let's carry on slicing the rest. Well, on the shape, doesn't matter. It's how you'd like to cut them up. That bit. Now the oil's heating up, so I have to do this quick low and move this to the side because it looks so hot right now and I don't want my chicken um, overcooked. So now that the chicken's in here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to mix the ingredients that are on my left, your right, I'm going to mix this one in here with the chicken. Alright, so the chicken's there, I'm just putting, uh, I overheated the oil so I put it on the side just to cool it down before I put it back. Alright, the first thing that needs to go in here is the soy sauce. So I just put it in, spread it evenly. Some of the herbs, just sprinkle it over. The black pepper. And the salt, just a little bit of it. Before you put your corn flour, let's put the egg in. I'm not good with breaking the eggs on the side, so I usually use the knife to crack it open. That goes in there. And the last bit, the corn flour, just Spread it in there. There you go. And you just mix the egg and the sauce, the mixed herbs, the 
pepper, the pepper and the corn flour all together. Just mix it up well like that. Remember to have your tongue and an extra plate ready on the side because after you deep fry, you have to serve them out. And then we get to work on the second recipe. Alright, that's about it. Make sure you mix it. This is the look that you need to get when you mix your um, corn flour, chicken and the oil sauce and the herbs and black pepper. There you go. That's how it needs to look like. Alright, so that's done. Put it to the side. Now I'm going to put this pot back on the stove and using my tongue, I'm going to dip all the chicken pieces into the hot oil. So we're going to deep fry this. Just be careful with hot oil. Slowly throw it in and just put all the pieces in. Remember if you keep... Remember, if you have kids around, I'll advise adult supervision with hot oil. So we're gonna put all the chicken pieces in there. All right, I'll leave this on the side and using my wooden spoon, I'll just give it a stir, just to make sure that the chicken pieces all get to separate a little bit. All right, shouldn't take long. Remember, you don't need to let it cook for more than 10 minutes. The maximum it can cook is six to seven minutes for the chicken. And just keep stirring it. Make sure it's golden brown before you serve it up. The color is beginning to change as well. All right, I'll put this on while that's cooking for the next seven minutes. I'm gonna work on the vegetables. I'm just gonna slice all the vegetables up, starting with the shallot. Okay, to one side. All right, the next one, onions. You can use two or just one. It's preferably up to you. Just slice it up. And then let's chop our capsicum up. Or right, while chopping your vegetables, always keep an eye on your chicken. Now it's about golden brown now. Let's just give it a stir and let it sit for another two minutes. Oh, look at that. All right, let's stay there. Just two more minutes. I'll save it out when it's ready. It should be ready. Let me just chop uh, the rest of the ingredients. Alright, that should be done. Let's serve this. The first lot of chicken comes out. Be very careful. This is the colour it has to give when you're serving. There you go. Serve this. So I'm going to remove this, let it sit on the side and put the other lot of chicken in. Alright, that's gonna stay on the side. Vegetables. So, some more capsicum. Carrots. Just be careful you don't uh, slice your fingers. And we have the garlic to. Well, sometimes you can grate the garlic. But for now, I'm just going to do a simple way of how I grate the garlic. I crunch, crush them. I crush the garlic with the end of the knife. The handle of the knife, actually. So I just crush them like that. Alright, and then just give them a tiny... Just chop them up again like that. All right, we're done with this. I'm going to bring out this pan and one more bowl. We'll put this to the side. We're going to mix all the sauce in. Our chili sauce, our ketchup, tomato ketchup. 
So we use three tablespoons of chili sauce, five tablespoons of ketchup, and two tablespoons of soy sauce. Put it in and sugar to make it the sweet chili chicken. That goes in and give it a stir. So when you stir, this is how it needs to look. There it goes. Okay, and a bit of oil. Put the oil in. Now we're gonna get our garlic and onion in. So there it goes. Put the stove on high actually. And let's get all our ingredients in. First, starting with the garlic and the onions. Alright, so let's give this a stir. That's looking good. Now the rest of the ingredients, that's the carrot, the capsicum. Just scoop them, throw them in. Pull it to the side and give it a stir. Look how colorful it is. All right, so remember, do not overfry your vegetables. Keep the color. And um, remember, if you want some flavoring, you can add in chicken stock cube. Right now, it's not the chicken that's gonna go in, it's the sauce. So let me just give it a stir again. Look at that, that's how it needs to look. So your chili sauce, your ketchup, your soy sauce, and a bit of chicken cube. Now, let's pour this in. So put it in onto your vegetables. So your vegetables can dip with the sauce and the last bit are chicken. So just slowly let the chicken fall in. There you go. And you just mix this up, the chicken and the vegetables and the sauce. So this is how you get to do your sweet chili chicken stir fry. Look at it, the sauce and the vegetables and the chicken combining so well. Alright, now you don't need to let the sauce cook for 5 minutes, just let it stay for 30 seconds or about 1 minute, it's up to you. I just let it heat up. And what I usually do, if I want the sauce to heat up, I just mix it up like it, let the stove on for 30 seconds, and then after that, I just switch the stove off and let the heat of the vegetables and the pan just heat up the sauce. So while that's there, I'm going to look for a plate to plate this. So our sweet chili chicken is ready. I'm going to plate it. Just bring this here, get this close by and let's serve it. Look at how colorful that is. Now this is something that you can try with your kids at home. I'm sure some kids don't like chili or hot food. That is something for you to have, enjoy at home with your family. I'm sure you've gone out and ordered these at the restaurants and all that, but this is something simple that you can do at home. So let's just plate it out. All the sides. And just put your vegetables all around. There you go. Set it aside. And you can garnish it up with chili or and there you have it this is my simple sweet chili chicken that you can try out at home with your friends now i'll see you next time on easy meals And that was Nicole with another recipe that she shared on the show a few years ago. We'll go for a quick breather. When we come back, we have more on throwback, so stay with us. Welcome back. Now, up next, we have sewing, and this time on sewing, Teresa shares another simple sewing idea that she did a few years ago on TV, and she's one of the talented person that sews, and she loves to sew. Let's check out what she's making for us today. 
Hey everyone and welcome to another DIY activity right here on Home Habits. It's been a while since I last did a couple of sewing. Hmm, if I can recall, I started with a plastic holder followed by a pocket chart, a full apron, a pillowcase with frills and a toilet paper holder. Yay! Five items already sewn. So for now, obviously, we've done a full apron. But for now, I will teach you how to sew a half apron. So this is what I will be teaching you how to make. So I chose the half apron because different people have a different taste in wearing aprons. So these days, most women just grab a half apron, tie it around the waist and get the job done. So I can't wait to get this thing done. So let's get straight into it, shall we? Step one. Use your tape measure to work out your desired measurements for the project. The plain fabric is 21 by 16 and a half inches. The floral fabric is 18 by 15 inches. The tie straps are 20 by 4 inches. And the front belt is 9 by 14 inches. Step 2. Iron all edges of your chosen fabric, both plain and floral. So what you do first is to fold in a quarter inch and finish off with a half inch on all sides and iron. So now you see that you have a half inch folded for a neat seam allowance. The importance of ironing your fabric is to make it easier for you to sew accordingly, so take the time. A seam allowance is defined as the area between the fabric edges and the line of stitches. Seam allowance can range from a quarter inch to as much as several inches. Different pattern requires a specific seam allowance. In general, our pattern calls for a quarter or a half inch for seam allowance. The next step is to start sewing all the ironed edges. Make sure to leave the longer side of the floral fabric unstitched so that you can join it with the front belt of the apron waist. Now you can see that all edges are neatly stitched, leaving the longer side of the fabric unstitched, both plain and floral. Step 4. The next thing you do is place your plain fabric on a flat surface and then place your floral fabric on top of the plain one and start making pleats. Pleats refers to any various types of fold formed by doubling back fabric and pressing, stitching or steaming into place. Moving on to the next step is the tie straps. We know that the straps are 9 by 14 inches, fold in half, iron and sew along the long edges and then the short edges either diagonally or horizontally. Step 6. Once you're done with the straps, pin on each side of the front belt. You want to make a few pleats before sewing all around. Place the other piece of the front belt right side up and pin in the straps on each side. Place the other piece of front belt right side down and pin all sides and sew with half inch seam allowance. Step 7. What you do next is turn over or flip right side out and you will see that the front belt is attached neatly to the straps. You can see that half apron is almost done. Finally, you either hand sew or use your sewing machine to run a straight stitch across the front belt. But I will just go ahead and hand sew instead. And there you have it. Your half apron is now complete. It's beautiful, isn't it? So choose your favorite fabric and start making your own aprons at home. You can even get creative by designing your own pattern for an apron. So I can't wait to use this. Until the next time, keep an eye out for more DIY projects on home habits. Goodbye. And that was Teresa Miria with another sewing. Viewers, I hope you learned a thing or two on this segment. And if you want to know more about the sewing, you can check out how and on page on MTV Online for more details. We'll go for a quick breather. When we come back, we have more on throwback session, so stay with us.
Welcome back. Now, up next, we have Home Deco by Billie Jean. She is one of the talented and very creative producer when it comes to Home Deco. And this time, she is making another Home Deco idea that she shared a few years ago on TV. Here it is. everyone and welcome to another fabulous segment of home decos this is a segment where we get to show you how to make use of anything and everything at home for home decoration now I am so excited about this project it's been on my mind for a while now and I'm so glad my friend Donella this is Donella everyone and she will be helping me with this project and we are going to do this project which is the card box photo frame boot. Now this is an idea, so you can just take it and do it the way you want for any event. Now it can be for birthdays or for Mother's Day or for graduation, Father's Day and baby showers and the list goes on. So yeah, that's what we'll be doing for this bit. So these are the things that you will need for this project. Cardboard, used popsicle sticks, paper glue, scissors, blade, ruler, a pencil, colored papers or gift wraps, glitters, and lastly, you will need a friend to help you on this. And so now we are ready to begin our project. Donella is ready with her blade and she is going to cut the box. Apart from all the items mentioned, you can use other items according to the event that you're planning. Step 1. Get an empty box. Take out the parts you don't want to use. Here we cut into a shape of a rectangular picture frame. Using a ruler and a pencil or biro, measure and draw a line where you can cut out later. Once you're done and satisfied with the measurements, proceed on to cutting along the traced line using a blade and a ruler. And so after you have cut out your cardboard box and your red papers, your colored papers according to the um, size of the frame, the next thing to do is spelling out your words. Now you can use whatever you want. You can either use the cardboard box to cut out the shape of your letters, of your words. But for us, we decided to just um, use glue and glitter. So we are going to spell out our words with the glue and then just pour glitter on it and that way it sticks. So yeah, that's what we are going to do. So let's get to it. We want our frame to stand out so we glued green colored papers onto the frame using a paper glue. decorations you want to be in the frame. It can be according to the event you're planning or the theme of your photo shoot. You can use markers, crayons, watercolors to add words to the frame. Here we use plastic glue to write out the words achieve and believe and sprinkle glitter onto the letters to make it stand out. Get creative with your decorations. Once you're done, leave it to dry. And there you have 
have a beautiful photo frame booth to spice up your photos. Ta-da! And this is our final project. I had so much fun doing this. Thank you, Donella, for your help. This is mine. Well, viewers, you can turn an empty cardboard box into an awesome project like this instead of just throwing it away and it, you know, ending it up somewhere else. Well, for more awesome ideas like this, join us again next time. Bye. And that was Billie Jean with another home deco idea that she did a few years ago. I'm sure viewers, you have learned something and you want to try that out for yourself. We'll go for a quick break. When we come back, we have more. Color Story is a segment where we feature talented individuals who own and run a business out of the comfort of their home. This time on Color Story, we feature RNS Catering, the interview I did a few years ago. Here it is. Thank you. Hello. What are you up to? I'm actually preparing lunch for a special client okay. and we have some cupcakes there for the, for the client. Okay. Do you have a moment? Yeah, sure. Um, I just want to have a chat with you so our viewers will know um, what goes behind RNS catering. Sure, let's do this. Let's do this. My name is Ryle Solian. I come from Central and I'm the founder and the director of RNS Catering. RNS Catering is a home-based business. It's a little business, so uh, mainly it's everything is done by me, especially the baking. I do the baking, the dressing and advertising, and I also do the delivery myself too. When it comes to cooking, um, I have my helpers. I Before I do the Cooking on the actual day, I ask for help or there's actually help us in the family, so they do help. So but, um, the biggest cooking will be like seafood dinner trays. Um, it takes a lot of time to do the seafood dinner trays. And apart from the seafood dinner trays, there's um, chicken, chicken um, protein dinner trays, which is um, chips and um, potato salads done in a big, um, silver tray, the foil tray, and also the red meats. So I am known as the business girl in the family because back in school, I used to sell like tenter lollies, flax cards, cakes. So at the end of the day, um, I have a little bit of my pocket money. So every day when in school, I, we were given like two kina, uh, lunch money each day. So. I never used to use those money. I used to get them and put them in my piggy bank and then and, and then at the end of the week I actually count my money and I was like, okay, I make this much. So it pushed me to lend money out to the working class people. So they actually come to the house, come and um, get um, money from me, borrow for money from me, and then I put an interest on top. So in, uh, during their fortnights they come and do their payments. So in college I you I was um, we had a task in Visual Basics, so we were asked to create our own um, website or web page for whatever business we wanted to do in the future. So for myself, I did came up with the catering page. So I downloaded pictures of cakes and foods, and then you know when you go and click on the this tab, and then it brings you to this page. So, so we actually did that and uh, that assignment, and so that actually. Yeah pushed me and motivated me to do the catering business. And with the catering business, it takes time and effort and commitment to do it. Because you know, you, you will have sleepless nights sometimes. You, you will not sleep properly because when you like go to sleep at 10 o'clock or 12 o'clock and you think the next day I wake up, I have to deliver this food on time to the client. So 
Okay. So I see that you named your catering service RNS. RNS. So why RNS? Okay, RNS Catering is a two surname collaboration. So um, it's actually me and my um, business partner. But because he's got his um, full time job there, I do everything myself. So I'm actually the boss of the company or the little business. So I run the show. He just comes in and gives his little bit of idea. But the rest of the time, everything is the ball is in my hands. To me, food is love. Food is love because wherever you go to and if there's actually food, everyone comes together and that's how you share the love. And that is also where my slogan comes in. The slogan for RNS Catering is food prepared with love. So whenever you prepare a food and when you prepare it from your heart, you will see how, how amazing the outcome is like people will smile and say oh this food is really lovely what's the secret ingredient and i tell them it's love when you prepare from your heart that's actually love so food is love itself when there's food there's a smile on somebody's face i love cooking and i love baking and i love to try out different type of creativity with food stuff and baking so when it comes to baking like when you go to shops or what you that you have one standard style type of style that you do. But for my sake, whenever I do a customer's cake, I do it in different styles, just uh, trying out new ideas and stuff. So I do the presentations in different styles, not just one style only. Um, with cooking too, I get bored just doing that same menu the whole week. So before I set my menu, uh, menu for the week, I put like for one day I'll do seafood the next day I do probably chicken and then the next day again I do red meat so you know different sort of um, meal types not the same thing I can't do chicken and salad the whole week it makes me bored um, if there's a viewer out there would like to purchase a meal from you what's the menu so the menu is um, yeah, the seafood I feature proteins like the seafood the red meat and the chicken so that's how I categorized um, the menu itself so you can with the red meat you have the beef the lamb the pork with the chicken and then there and then the seafood like you have fish fish is mainly fish and prawns is the mainly menu that's been featured on a daily basis of cooking so how how I set the menu it's different so uh, it's different and it's simple it's just every every the daily cooking that we do have it every day and it's, most of it is more uh, PND cooking style so we have like frying um, steaming or smoking fish on the fire and stuff so some things some of the menus I don't put them out on Facebook that's when I do a mess um, mess a uh, corporate catering so once in a while not that oftenly um, we do lunch packs for corporate like when they call and ask us if we could um, provide a lunch for them so so basically everything is just lunch order only once in a while it's corporate order well I see that you have like a lot of um, things to do right now you're frying chicken and chips and it smells so good um, is it like an order for some client Yes, this is actually a special order for a client. Okay. So it's only six lunch bags for today. So okay. Because Monday we don't cook. Monday is the day for administration and stuff. So, so apart from what you do here, um, is there anything you, you do apart from this? Um, the things that interest me the most and keeps me busy. So I have something interesting to show you. Okay. okay. Um, this is the mask that I've sewn. So I was actually given the template by someone. So I'm not actually good with mask, but this was my first run. So just look at it. Okay. I think it looks good. Yeah. So that's basically what you, uh, apart from cooking or baking, you do that. Yeah. During this um, lockdown period. So this, are act this is actually the adult mask, which was going for five kina. And this is the kids mask, which is three kina. 
And apart from the mask, um, I made my own apron. Wow. So this is from um, Off Cuts. So this is how it looks like. So you can see that it's actually Off Cuts joined together. Wow, you know what? This is uh, interesting. I think you're going to sew my mask the next time. Sure, no worries. Well, viewers, that's it for this week's color story. Thank you for your time. Thank you, too. Now, viewers, if you're looking for an affordable catering service, choose RNS Catering. And that was another color story that I did a year ago. Viewers, if you're interested in the service that RNS provides, you can contact them on the details showing on the screen now. It's time for Brida. We'll be back after this with Tech People with Godfrey Man. Welcome back. Now we're still on the throwback session. Up next, we have Tech People, and here now is Godfrey Man. Hey everybody and welcome back to House and Home. So with all of the commotion about FIFA from last week, I thought I'd try it out to see just what all the fuss was about. That and personally, I've been trying to do a lot of things that get me out of my comfort zone. And I've got to say, I am quite impressed. FIFA 18 is the latest iteration from EA Games and it's pretty much released on everything. It's also the first ever FIFA game that I've played. Like, actually legitimately played. Plus, it also has a FIFA game with a story narrative, which works wonders for people like me who can't be drawn into games like these even if they're tied to a bag of eggs and bacon. <laughs> but you must be wondering, Godfrey, you've never played a FIFA game before. What makes you qualified to give your thoughts about it? Well, to that, I say I'm in the perfect position to review this game. I'm unbiased, new to the franchise, and I'm willing to play anything. This is FIFA 18. No finer stadium in football, the Bernabeu, the setting for one of football's most demanding fixtures, the Madrid derby. It's an absolute privilege to be here, and I don't think we're going to be disappointed. We are underway at the Bernabeu. First of all, this game is actually quite gorgeous, and that surprises me because I've never actually played a game like this before. I mean, especially that opening montage. I really loved looking at this game, from the grassy fields to the giant stadiums and the character models. When you don't look too closely, everything looks quite pristine. However, that all changes when you take a closer look, because then you start to notice all the little imperfections. Hair particles are low res, facial details are very unnerving, and some of the gestures are often very off at times. And I honestly just couldn't take the model of Ronaldo seriously. I mean, just listen to him. Maybe you should come play for real. Come play for real. Though when you get back to playing, that's all these really are. Imperfections. Because I'm glad to say this, but the game is insanely fun to get into. The whole playing experience isn't really hindered by these things, and more often than not, these just result in really funny situations. <laughs> is it gonna be one of those days? <laughs> And when you get into the main menus of the game, something that I've always liked about the FIFA franchise is their use of licensed music. It's honestly the perfect soundtrack for playing this game. Okay, so seriously, the one thing that I really enjoyed about this game is how easily it makes you feel like a professional just from the start. When the game loads up, you actually get pushed into the deep end with a match that starts as soon as you select the language. Now, I was actually quite hesitant going into the game for obvious reasons, and I was actually quite excited to try the story mode. But this match actually went quite well. I mean, I wouldn't say the game holds your hand too much for this, but it's very patient with you. The game actually went quite well because I scored a goal, which was A, the first goal that I've ever scored in any FIFA game ever, and B, the highest amount of scores I've ever had in any FIFA game. So I was actually quite excited. So once you're done with this match, you just head straight on to the main menus of the game. We can start up matches with your friends online or locally, or if you just want to play yourself and play the journey, which also does a really good job at teaching you the basics of the game. 
Once you start the campaign and you're terrible at matches, the game actually actively gives you hints on how to become better at playing. So it's more like the campaign gives you training wheels. It points out your errors and tells you how to fix them, which is incredibly encouraging for someone like me who is, as I've stated before, terrible at this game. But anyway, let's talk about the journey. Now the journey is something that's quite new to the FIFA franchise. It's basically a full-blown narrative campaign that surrounds soccer, and it started in last year's FIFA 17. You continue the story of Alex Hunter from FIFA 17, who's just on the verge of becoming a professional. So it'll be up to you to continue his story and to get him to where he needs to be. The story is pretty much a bunch of matches spread out over time and separated by cutscenes and breaks to the home menu. So it plays out more like an interactive cinematic experience, which I actually quite enjoyed. During these cutscenes, you also get timed options, which will then dictate your personality. And I thought this was a great way to introduce some variety into the narrative. And it also opens up the doors to multiple playthroughs. The face of the manager, especially as a young player. The performances by these characters weren't that bad for what I was expecting. I mean, though, it is a FIFA game, so what were you expecting? <laughs> they weren't terrible, but I did appreciate them. The story from what I had played seemed to delve into what happens after he's almost made it, which I enjoyed. This doesn't seem too heavy-handed, and the side characters are actually pretty funny and have purpose. I mean, they're part of a team, and you really do feel for them when you're in the middle of a match, and one of your mates that you were laughing with just a bit ago gets a yellow card. It's writing like this that makes me care more about these characters and allows for empathy. I mean, I care about whether or not I get the goal in, I care about my performance on the field, and I care about whether or not I have good sportsmanship. Not just because that's how it's supposed to be in the game and in real life, but the game gives me these incentives to work to in the character of Alex. I play to make sure he gets his goals, and I do well to make sure he's liked, because like all good video game narratives, this empathy is given to us as an extension of these characters. We stop exactly being ourselves and we start wanting what the character wants. And that's a good mark of a narrative. And a really good one at that. Good last season, kid. Cheers. Have a good match. Yeah, yeah, you too. Uh, swap shirts after the game? I will see what I can do. So honestly, I really enjoyed this game and I loved the journey. I mean, it's nothing special, but the inclusion of it in the game was a really good move by the developers. I definitely think that the previous FIFA players are going to love this no matter what, but it's also a really good place to start for newbies to the franchise. FIFA really wasn't my forte, and now that this is a game that I actually have plans to go back to, it speaks a lot about the game, how easy it is and how fun it is to get into, when you're alone or if you want to play with friends. All you need is just another mate on the couch or a steady online connection to play with friends who can't necessarily be on the couch. All in all, I had a really great time with FIFA 18 and I'm definitely gonna go back to Toro Gaming to continue playing it. And if there's anyone out there who'd like to play FIFA 18 as well, feel free to head down to Toro Gaming at Garden City to do just that. Those guys are complete champions and they let me play the game and gather this footage for you guys. So what did you guys think of FIFA 18? Have you played it? Do you like FIFA games? What kind of FIFA games did you play? Do you like real sports or esports? Tell us all about it on our Facebook page or feel free to email us. Anyway, we're going to head back now into the studio with Teresa and I. See you next time on Tech People. And that was a throwback on Tech People with Godfrey Man. Well, viewers, we've come to the end of this week's show. If you want to know more about this episode, feel free to visit MTV online. And you can contact us on the details showing on the screen now. And as I mentioned earlier on the show, we must abide by the COVID preventive measures that are in place. Wear a mask at all times, wash your hands all the time, and when you're outdoor, keep a safe distance. And that's all the time we have for tonight's show. Make sure to join me Tuesday, 7 p.m. right here on MTV. Until then, pleasant viewing. Goodbye.